Welcome to the 13th ever episode of the Iced Coffee Hour. At this point, we have gained $2,359. Gained? Earned? <laughs> I think we're, yeah, that means we're averaging about $30 a day. That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah, and we were able to um, secure some guests. Really for this excited week. about these guests today. Really excited. Uh, so why don't we welcome them to the show? All welcome, right. Graham and Jack. Come on in. It's just great, great to have you guys. Here. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think you're a better host than we are. You <laughs> just need to take over. That was our Jeez. goal, was to come in and just take yeah. over. You have no idea how many takes sometimes we'll have to oh, do yeah. in the beginning. And just Jack to say says, welcome. Yeah, that's like that takes us four times that's to amazing. go and say that. Yeah. And well, usually we'll, Jack's like, we just got to do it. We're yeah. warmed up. We've been filming all day. Yeah, we're so. warmed up, and we've also been hosting content together for 10 years. So it's... Uh, it's kind of like... We can tell. That's just what we uh, do. You could yeah. tell when I said mm. gained... We had yeah. to roll with it there. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. had to just improv at that point. You know, it's beautiful. It's an art. <laughs> it is. So, welcome to the Iced Coffee Hour. We're super excited to have you guys on. I mean, we're really excited to be on. I did not mm. know that um, you were a local creator. Yeah. And I think I mentioned to you when we ran it. I mean, we ran into each other on Saturday. This was yeah, like yeah. a couple of days ago. That's how this came yeah. to be. Outside of a coffee shop. Yeah, <laughs> which was amazing. Places. I also was in a hat, sunglasses, and had yeah. a scarf around my neck, which was uncharacteristic yeah. for me. And I had no idea how... First, I saw you, and I was okay. like, I think I, I think that's Graham Steven. And I was like, <laughs> act cool, be chill. And I told my uh, fiance, I was like, I think, I think I know that guy. And then I turned around, and you were staring at me, yeah. and I was like, all right, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. because you looked yeah. familiar. It's weird. <laughs> I've been recognized when I wear right. the, like, the mask and everything. And I'm like, how did you know? Yeah. There's no way... But then I saw you and I'm like, it looks familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. There's yeah. that look um, both from like creator to um, audience member or creator to fan and fan to creator and then creator to creator. Yeah. I think where it's just like, wait a second. Yeah. But see, I'm a <laughs> fan know, yeah. of your content. Like, I Insane. really yeah. like it. It's good. You guys are too good. Now, really quick, we should do a background, like like some backstory mm -hmm. here of, of who you are on your channel. Sure. Um, you tell us, actually. Okay. How did this start? You're making some really good videos right now on YouTube. Like, it's too good, I think. Like, the quality, I think, is 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 too too much, too high of quality. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. that yeah. means a lot. Um, our history dates back to um, 10 years ago, in, in or about 10 years ago. In 2011, we started making YouTube content. Um, I had just graduated college. I grew up here in Los Angeles and um, I played lacrosse, which was a very foreign sport to play in Los Angeles. I had this idea coming out of high school and going into college that there should be a network for the sport. Like there should be the NFL network for lacrosse. And when I graduated college, it was unlikely that that was gonna end up on television, but I still wanted to do the idea. And so just took to YouTube to start making content about lacrosse. Mm. Um, and at the same time, during that exact same you know, two month span of us starting this network, uh, myself and a friend, Colin was making content about his lacrosse team in Colorado. There was only two people making lacrosse content on the internet and it was us in LA and Colin in Colorado. And so it was like- Small community. Yeah, it was a small community. So <laughs> we connected very quickly. I uploaded and I think 30 minutes later I had an email. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's so cool. And we were really viewing it as like a network. So we wanted to acquire content mm. and, um, he was making like a docu-series. It was a like very good filmmaking, very good storytelling. And we wanted to acquire his series. So mm. that's how we met, um, convinced him to move out to LA. For a three month internship. Yeah. And then he stayed for nine years yeah, now. It's been nine uh, years. We've been making content together ever since. We had a, we had a really great ride with um, that company. It's called the Lacrosse Network. We built it from 2011 to 2014. And we ended up selling the company mm. uh, to a New York based uh, media group called Whistle Sports. Um, at the time they had just brought on dude perfect as their primary partner to go into YouTube. And we then became, you know, we, we brought on our company, uh, and our goal was to build that brand, but then also join the team and help build out athlete and sports content across social platforms. I got to know how long does it take you to make a video? The amount of work that yeah. I bet you put in it, it's mind blowing to me because I know like yeah. as, as a creator, it's just like, it's not that that yeah. easy. People it's always like, think you just turn on the camera and it's like, well, derp de derp. And there, there's like, there's a viral video. It's never like that. It's really funny as a creator. Cause like when I first started watching your videos, I thought the same thing. I was like, how long, like what's the process? What's the workflow here? What's I'm the process? Like, about yeah. That. It's like, how, how long yeah. are you researching? Yeah. What What is your like script look like? Like, yeah. I'm so curious about you that. You tell me process. yours. I'll yeah, tell you sure. mine. <laughs> uh, it varies. We're actually 
you know, in this ever evolving process of trying to pin down um, and balance between letting your creativity flow, but then also being efficient and making sure that you're getting enough videos out to support yourself as, as a company. And, and uh, you know, for us, we oscillate between some of our videos take 10 days uh, because they have interviews, they have a ton of different pieces of B-roll, they have yeah. writing sessions, rewriting sessions. Uh, Colin, you know, totally leads on that process. And he, from day one, since the day I met him, he's just like super intensive on storytelling. And if the story doesn't make sense, it doesn't go out. Uh, and that means like every frame builds on top of each other. And if it doesn't, we're gonna lose people's attention. We're gonna not, you know, create something that's conversational at all. Um, and so now we're starting to work into spaces where when we started talking about ourself, like we made a video that you commented on mm -hmm. called How Much YouTube Pays Us, which is kind of like a- I see anything money that, related. Yeah, I yeah, comment yeah. on I mean, that. I loved yeah. it. <laughs> Very on brand for you. Um, but that video took less time because the storytelling of it was like personal and we were able to tell our own story. And doing that, it was, it was a lot easier to uh, flip that video around. So we're trying to balance now and understand what are the videos that are the big swings? Like, you know, the video we made with Mr. Beast, obviously that's a big swing. I love that video. That, that's gonna cross a million views, uh, you know, probably in the next week or, or 10 days. And that was a big swing. That's worthy of spending a ton of time on. Um, now we also need the frequency of building a community and having a conversation with our audience. So we have to tear off our videos and say, this is a tier one video that is a big swing. And here's a tier two video that's, you know, probably in the, we're aiming for a hundred thousand people to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, and tier one most likely is involves us interviewing someone. You look at the yeah. Mr. Beast video, there are three different interviews incorporated in that video, each of which were about an hour long that we recorded. So the process of going through and sifting through it, finding which parts of that interview you want and then putting them into a story and then filming our hosted, that's what really makes the process mm. longer. Mm. Trying to figure out the story when you have so many different sources that you're using. Again, like when yeah. it's just us, it's much more linear. Yeah. Why does it take 10 days? But our goal now, even if we have a video that's gonna take 10 days, is to make sure that we have multiple other videos going on at the same time yeah. that are potentially lighter lift videos. So that yeah. when 10 days go by, we're not just sitting with one YouTube video, we have a couple more in the works. Right. I found that really interesting when you said you have tier one and tier two videos, because yeah. something I wanted to ask you guys is that it's so clear, like when you post a video, at least when I see it, I'm like, okay, this video is going to be a banger yeah. and tons of people are going to watch it. It's going to blow up like the David Dobrik mm -hmm. video. Like there's a reason why you guys have done like yeah. more than one of those. Cause they just, they blow up immediately. But at the same time, I've, I, I feel like you guys are, there's something in you guys that are trying to like post videos. Maybe that don't totally blow up such as like a day in quarantine, mm. you know, like I feel like, like you guys would see that and think like, maybe this video isn't gonna blow up. Yeah. Like, and it, you You're kind right. of know in making it that it's not gonna blow up. Maybe it's a filler or it's a, you guys go into it knowing yeah. it's a tier two. It's not necessarily a filler, but I think we've we've moved away from that a bit, uh, but that comes from just the inherent creative desire to make other things okay, and not be like yeah. in a box. Um, but, but I would say we're very different creators even then from that time that's what I'm putting saying, out yeah. you know, like, a day in the life video. Yeah. I don't think we would ever do that. And that was hmm. two months ago, three months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've evolved quite a bit over the past couple months. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't even consider that now on the chart of something that we would consider oh, anymore. Okay. Um, but yeah, that the past, we've, we've had this channel for over three years and it's been so much experimentation around from when we started the channel, where you remember the days of Casey and I set daily vlogging and people just making cool stuff about their life, we tried that. We tried to tell stories about our life and it just wasn't interesting. And we it was just very hard for us to do. Mm. And it was really surprising because it was like, we're very confident in our video making ability, but we couldn't find a way to tell stories about our life that was interesting. But then once we shifted that to the conversations we were having about the creator industry and just made that the topic, it like immediately was able mm -hmm. to find an audience. How so. do you know everybody? Like, how do you get Mr. Beast for an interview like that? Yeah. It seems like you know a lot of people yeah, in the space. We do, it's yeah. like you are, you're the one who's I, interconnected. I think uh, we've always, I've, I've personally always prided myself on networking. Uh -huh. um, I think somehow it just happens. Coffee shops. Yeah, coffee <laughs> shops. Just walk around but, the streets. Yeah. But <laughs> also we've used yeah. videos as networking tools. Okay. Um, we made a video about Will Smith uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. 
And within an hour, we got an email from his management company, and then we were able to connect with them and, and work with them. You got to put Will Smith in the title of this yeah. video, yeah. Yeah. featuring Will Smith. <laughs> what? But yeah, and, and, and how was that? How was that like? Sometimes, like that one about Will Smith was sort of almost free consulting because Will Smith had just joined YouTube right. at the time, mm -hmm. and we thought, well, let's give him our take on what he's doing on YouTube. Right. So his management company is going to be on that immediately because that's their world. It's almost like the real audience for that video, even though it hit maybe 300,000 views, was actually the five people in the Will Smith management office. That's who it was directed yeah. at. Mm -hmm. So they got it immediately. Even mm -hmm. like you said, like you'll mm -hmm. see anything about money. So there was yeah. a purpose. You knew going mm -hmm. into it that yeah. that was your intention. That was just a better mm -hmm. version of cold outreach in an email. Okay. But what about Mr. Beast? Because you had him in the Be video. How did that happen? Beast came from, uh, I. So we also met Yes Theory in that way, where mm -hmm. we made a video about them, and yes. that's how we met them. We became very close with them. Yes Theory ended up doing a video with Mr. Beast. Um, we made a video about Mr. Beast. He saw it, didn't reach out to us. And then uh, I, had a, I had one of the Yes Theory guys on my podcast talking about the experience of working with Mr. Beast. And right after, he DM'd us. And he was just like, mm -hmm. hey, guys, I really like your videos. Um, can I call you? And I gave him my number and since then he's just been that's fun a super close yeah. connection uh a guy who's like an amazing mentor i think he's a great person to be who he is on our platform because of who he is yeah uh and he just has a very vested interest in creators growing and he's taken an interest in in us and uh that's awesome like yeah. super cool and so it's very uh it's very cool to have someone like that to be able to reach out to and connect with. And so that's over time, we've built a relationship to the point where I can send him a text and say, Hey, when your finger on the app game is done, can we hop on a, on a zoom call for a yeah. video? And he's like, yeah. And, that's awesome. and that was really cool. Um, and really special. So, that is so cool. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I think it's just the, the quality that you put in reminds me a bit of that, that Casey Neistat style. Yeah. hundred percent. Of just, it's, yeah. it's, but I honestly, like I tell Jack, like it's too good. Mm. It's too it really good for is. YouTube. Like this is like movie quality stuff that Mainstream you're putting on YouTube. Yeah, stuff, appreciate yeah, that. Really nice. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. I think I think a lot of that comes though from us having to work. Like, so in the early days when we are f like when we first started the Lacrosse Network, I, I always had this vision of working with Nike. I was like, mm. I want to work with Nike. And so when you got to make a video when, about them now. <laughs> yeah. Well, when Colin when Colin came in, that was the goal. Like that was our north star as a as a business. Was mm. we have to build something that's elite enough and premier enough that a brand like Nike would want to advertise with us. And again, this is such an early stage in YouTube that um, it was really hard to convince anyone that YouTube was worthy. So we had to make sure that our stuff looked like stuff that Nike would want to put their name on. Mm -hmm. And eventually Nike did work with us. And when we did work with them, we wanted to use the money to level up and make ourselves look like a TV network. Uh, so we always viewed YouTube as just like the democratic television channel. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't like, I don't think I fully understood exactly what it was in the beginning. Um, I just always viewed it as that. And so working with brands, working with athletes, you had to have a certain standard of production and filmmaking and storytelling for them to feel excited about who you were. Otherwise they thought you were showing up with like a flip camera and mm -hmm. like saying, Hey, we're doing a YouTube video with these guys felt so yeah. low budget. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. You, we, we made up for it in storytelling and filmmaking. Do you ever feel like that works against you, though, that you put like 10 days of work into a video and like yeah. all of a sudden and, and it just maybe doesn't do as well versus you mm -hmm. see some of these guys with like, what's up, guy? I'm going to and it's just yeah. like 20 minutes of zero editing and a million views. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about that yeah. all the time. There are commentary channels that talk about similar topics to what we mm -hmm. talk about. And they're just sitting down with a lo fi webcam, basically. Yeah. And it'll be a 30 minute video with a few cuts, their thoughts on a, on a topic. And they'll get exponentially more views than yeah. we did on a video where we decided to tackle that topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's definitely something that we talk about. I, I think we're really interested though in finding that middle ground, I think, of where yeah. our brand sets apart and it is unique and someone can look at it and say, wow, that's really dialed. Uh, that feels like a show, but it also doesn't take as long as a TV show would take to make. Yeah, I'll tell you my perspective. Yeah. I liked your channel and it caught my attention because you were making videos like you had millions of subscribers, but I think I found you at them at like right. 30 or 40K or oh, something like that. Yeah. And I was like, why Why is it so good? Yeah. I really believe, and it's like, it's too good. Hmm. And from my perspective too, like some of these video topics that I do, we'll talk about the stimulus briefly. 
Yeah. I will spend like five, six hours compiling like weeks worth of information talking about the upcoming stimulus package. Meet Kevin goes on his computer for 20 minutes and just talks for eight minutes. His videos will double my views, mm. which is and, and yeah. with no editing whatsoever. It's just him talking to a camera and I'm putting so much thought into this to make it very yeah. concise. Sometimes it doesn't make a difference. And so, like you said, there is that fine balance mm-hmm. between just how much work do you want to put in it? How much risk do you want to put in one video potentially not doing well versus mm-hmm. really well? I also think like growing a audience online, like your goal is you're basically aggregating a bunch of people to point them in a certain direction. And um, your ability to point them in that direction determines the value of you as a creator. Uh-huh. And even if you're getting a million people to watch you, if you don't have that ability, it doesn't matter. And so I think our style, our quality, um, like we made a video about sports, about the NFL and about Cam Newton that um, didn't do well, but it caught the attention of Cam's team. Mm. And we were able to get a meeting, get some opportunities, get in the room with them. So you start to redefine what does it mean to do well? Um, same thing is like we've talked about, our networking ability has come from our ability to make, uh, make videos and make videos that have a certain quality about them that it catches the eye of people and they have the same reaction that you have of like, hmm, there's something to these guys that's different. Yes, this video didn't get a million views, mm-hmm. but there's something about these guys that I want to I want to engage with. Did you meet David Dobrik? We have met David in person, but not after that okay. video. It was prior. And um, after that, though, he did. So the interesting thing about that video, um, why David Dobrik laughed so much, is that he pumped that video as if it was a brand deal. He did a swipe up on Snapchat. He did a swipe up on Instagram. He commented on the video. Wow. Uh, he promoted it like he was promoting a brand deal. And I've never seen a video explode like yeah. that video. Yeah, and it exploded. And I was telling Colin, I like, love that video. Brands really? pay would pay a lot of yeah. money for what he just did right. for our brand, uh, which is really cool. And so again, it's like that the the amount of effort that we put into the videos, we we've seen uh, like high returns on the investment. Uh, but we are trying to find the balance to make sure that we can be more frequent because that is a part of the YouTube you know, algorithm. Yeah, the game we, got a, we got a shrine over here above the fireplace. It's yeah. for the algorithm. <laughs> so before we leave, we need to chant, you know, smash the like I, button, smash the like button I 10 times that. for the algorithm. <laughs> That's there, good luck. There's two things I wanted to bring up. Yeah. One was that we do intentionally also film in our car because it feels very like I watch your video homey. Yes. Yeah, and like, and like it is, it did start because it was just like, okay, this sounds really good in here. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like that grounds us a little bit in our um, ability to not feel so distant in our, because our editing is very like intricate and it's important to feel close to your audience mm-hmm. and being in that car setting feels so relatable. Um, now the second thing is one thing I really love about what you do is you're talking about such complex topics that to me, like when I'm watching your videos, there's so much value. And I think value goes way beyond production value. It's the value Mm. to the audience is what the true value of the video is. Um, and in your last video, I told Colin about this this morning. I loved that you keep these Easter eggs that are just so YouTube where you said, I think you said, um, what's up Graham? It's guys. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, that is YouTube. And that's what I love about YouTube uh, is thanks. you're just catching someone for yeah. a moment and then the, you go down to the comments and you're like, did everyone else see that? And it's like, <laughs> it's just such an awesome thing that um, I think is just not something that someone on television who talks about money right. would ever, they, they would be oh, like, yeah. what are you talking about? Don't do that. That's yeah. weird. Uh, but it's so good. Oh, thanks. And it's cool. so relatable and it's so like, it builds that connection. And again, that ability to point your audience in a direction because now I'm like, I'm, it's to I'm save in. money. Yeah, that's all, that's the whole direction. Save money and hit the like button. Right. Like those are the two things I say in every video. Right. Right. Don't yeah. spend money, guys. I think your channel yeah. though very recently has pushed us to try and offer mm-hmm. more value and get more specific. Yeah. In all of our videos, uh, if you've been following lately, like we went into uh, the specifics of an influencer marketing deal. I don't think we would have done that before watching your mm-hmm. channel heavily. I just try to appeal to the biggest audience possible, which is a little bit difficult because then you start regurgitating the same information over again. But uh, my thing is like, what could every 20 something take away from this video that's a little bit different from the last video I did? And, And here's the thing too, no one goes and watches my old videos, very rarely. So I could have said something a year ago no one watches it because it's not new. So I just I don't know about that, Graham. myself sometimes, really. I looked up how many views you're doing in a month and I was yeah. pretty impressed. Yeah, but People most- People are of- watching your library. 
Not really. I would say probably 80% of the views are from the last 30 days. And then the other 20% is from previous videos. And honestly, I would say there may be 10 videos or 15 videos out of 500 on the main channel that just consistently get views every Mm. single month, no matter what happens. And those are usually the biggest viewed videos. Everything else, like I have videos from two years ago that that I spent so much time on. There's so much value. But they'll do like... 12 views a day. Are they like really topical to that time or? No, those like are, they're, they're those are videos that did really well at the time. It's mm. just that curve that, you know, spikes yeah, up yeah. and then it's, then it dies down and then no one goes back and watches it, all the videos. Interesting. So I could remake the same video every year. Yeah. And it's new for those people who never go back and see the old videos. I think what's interesting about your channel, Colin and I always talk about transformative storytelling mm-hmm. and how things that suggest transformation and like, that's why Mr. Beast does so well is because from the start of his video to the end, something amazing happens, right? There's some sort of transformation that uh, you're watching, but your videos are on the topic of money, which is arguably the most transformative thing there is in the world. Like Mm. me going from not having money to having money or uh, saving money or like just an increase in in money is the most transformational thing that a person could go through, which is what makes your videos so um, immediate, I think from a click-through rate perspective, Mm. just like, Yes, I'm going to click on that. It is the universal language. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs yes. money. Everybody needs money. That's something I didn't realize until yeah. I started making videos is like this applies or can apply to anybody. Yeah. Even if you don't think you're into money, like you, you got to pay the bills. It's also a good yeah. topic for, uh, I, I think actually maybe you could you mm. can tell us, but I think it's a good topic for YouTube because people who talk about money, there's a lot higher CPMs for them and there's a lot more people who want to engage with them if you're giving advice to people about or talking about yes, money. Yes, it's, it's hard to stay relevant in mm, that because interesting. mostly the principles for saving money, personal finance, investing are really basic. Right. Only so many times they could say the same thing of invest in an index fund, do that consistently, hold long term, build up your credit score. I could summarize everything in a 20 minute video, but then you have to spice things up, right. especially posting three times a week. Yeah, that's amazing. super like, impressive. It's yeah. a topic though that doesn't hurt to be reminded about as an audience member though. Sometimes. Times that's how we justified right? like, it. There, yeah. There's a feeling of bettering yourself after watching one of your videos, like taking, uh, feeling a little bit more financially secure, even mm-hmm. if you have yet to actually take an action after yeah. watching your videos. I've noticed, at least for myself, because I went through the same curve of like, for a few years, you're really into like personal finance. Like I would go on Reddit every single day and read like the financial independence subreddit, the investing right. subreddit, and be so into it. After a few years, you're like, Oh, it's all kind of the same stuff now and you just stop checking it and you, you kind of grow through that phase. But this is something for me, I'm trying to like throw in entertainment too so you can keep those people engaged to know it all, but they keep coming back because maybe there's something else or maybe it's he'll tell a joke. Maybe he'll say, what's up, Graham, it's guys here. And like that keeps me, so like stuff like that. It's it, Yeah, I think that's yeah. the most dynamic thing is when the personality becomes bigger than the topic, mm-hmm. then you can talk about anything. And I think Casey did that. Right. Yeah. Casey was just like, Casey can still to this day talk about anything and I'll watch it. Um, and I think that's where, in my opinion, when you're starting to, when you're starting to catch like onto the algorithm in YouTube and like people are just there willing to watch yeah. you, but they're there for a specific topic. I think the opportunity is to start to build in things into your show like that. Like what's up, Graham, it's guys mm-hmm. and like funny moments that um, happen more often than you talking about the topic. Yeah. So over time, basically your personality takes up more of the time on screen than the topic. Yeah. Uh, and you lock yeah. in a yeah. certain group of the audience right. that will be Super there no matter what. I've been trying to expand. I gave uh, relationship advice. Thanks to Jack. Jack set me up. Uh, crazy story. You want to you explain this? I gave this on, like marriage advice. Yeah. I don't Let's know if you've seen here. this video. Yeah, it was, a, it was a phone call interview where a woman was going to divorce her husband. <laughs> okay. Because like high the, stakes. Hu- yeah, yeah. The husband <laughs> said like <laughs> And they were like, we need grams and yeah, <laughs> the husband literally said he he was like, Okay, so I don't want to marry a woman who's making less than twenty percent of what I make in a year. And then they ended up getting married anyways. And then she started making like five times the amount he was making. Wow, tables turned. So yeah. she was making like eighty K a month. Okay. Right. So he was making one fifty a year. Okay. She was making like twenty. She was making yeah. twenty a year. Now she's making eighty a month, so like oh a million a year. And by the way, a lot of people felt that like that story was fake or something. Okay. But completely real. We, we can't we can't disclose exactly what the business is. It's a very niche business. I would have no idea that this even exists, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Play off camera. Or you know, I'll tell you and just bleep it out yeah. when you remember. Okay, that, that's really exciting. Yeah, she's yeah. she sells like
You guys couldn't hear that, <laughs> but <laughs> what he just said was the most unexpected thing you right. could have heard. No yeah. one would yeah. guess it, but, but yeah. yeah. 80, 80. A mill a year. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. What are we doing? That's that's like, we're in the wrong business. We're in the wrong, yeah, yeah, in the wrong business. You would never yeah. think, and it, it, it's just like neatly packaged together. But that's kind of like, like uh, slime, right? Yes. Like slime. Every, like people are making so much money on right. selling yeah. slime. It's so like it's, an audience for irrational things. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, there's an well, audience you just, for everything. You just kind of gave them a hint that yeah. it's irrational. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. When you said yeah. slime. Dude, I know, <laughs> like, it, slime's rational. Yeah. Okay. Interesting yeah. business. Yes, it is. And she started making it a crazy amount. And now all of a sudden, she's wondering if they should get a divorce. Because the tables have turned. Because yeah. the tables so have turned. So now she's saying, listen, buddy, you're yes. making uh, under 20% of what I'm yes. yeah. yeah. But the plot also thickens because Amazing. there's no prenup involved. <laughs> no prenup. So, and they got married after knowing each other oh, three months. for three months. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, we, we'll get your take on this. Yeah, this yeah. Interesting. Sure. He married her knowing that he was making 150, 170 a year. She okay. was making 20. He did not ask for a prenup okay. uh, out of good faith, sure. he says. Now that she's making all this money, she was concerned that, like, I'm making all this money and he might take half of my business and half my money. And then I brought him on the call and I said, what do you think about this? Wow, Graham, what and show is this? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> the Graham Stephan show. <laughs> okay. The second channel, the Graham Stephan yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the show I want to be on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Graham Stephan show. Okay. So I brought him on. I said, what was the, what was the yeah. thinking behind this? And he was saying, well, listen, like, in good faith. I married her knowing that if we got divorced, I would owe her as per, you know, whatever the California judge rules. But now that she's making more money, she wants me to sign a postnuptial agreement. How is that fair? And so there's a lot, I think they already filed for divorce. So they did. I got in too late. I could have saved this yeah, marriage. I could have gotten have in a little sooner. I would, but, I would yeah. have recommended, I think, just investing some of the money into marriage counseling. And, yeah. and trying That's to explore said. that. And yeah. then also I would probably recommend to people who are... Um, listening out there if that's a thought that's crossing your mind before you get married reevaluate it yeah you don't want to yeah. you don't want to base your marriage like it's a he like a, based yeah. on your revenue and, so, and her revenue i hate to interrupt i brought that up to him yeah. and i said like who says that he yeah. said it was it was done in a in just like a joking manner banner but and I, she I said it wasn't yeah, she, she still, chimed in but, and said it wasn't. But he also said that he wanted <laughs> to watch this. Yeah. He wanted to marry this someone. Episode. It was one of the most viewed phone calls that we got on yeah. that second channel. Have but, you guys clip that out and like put it on TikTok? I feel like that would be like, <laughs> it's like so it's too interesting. intricate. We'll yeah. have to make like 10, yeah. 10 parts of it. But he said he wanted to be able to marry someone who was self sufficient, mm. who could at least provide for themselves. And I, I kind of got that. That like you you don't want someone who necessarily relies on you for everything and at least can can you know pave their own way. So I, I kind of get that too. If he did say it as a joke, the joke is now on him. So, <laughs> yeah. What can a, you do? It's not a yeah. funny joke. It's not, it's no, not something not, where you say that I everyone's can't imagine just like that. laughing. I can't imagine yeah. saying that at dinner with my fiance and her <laughs> laughing. Yeah. It just be <laughs> super uncomfortable. So funny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Such a jokester. Wow. Yeah. Uh, weird. Yeah. But we, so anyway. I totally agree with you when you say it's really important to market yourself mm. and maybe not like the content that you're putting out, but just you as a person, as a brand. Yeah. And that's exactly what we've been trying to do with Graham, mm. right? Like we created a podcast so we could talk about things that weren't so finance related mm -hmm. and people could see more raw Graham because on his main channel, it's heavily mm. like cut and stuff like that. Right. That's, and, that's Graham playing a character. Graham. Graham. Yeah, <laughs> to a certain some to a certain extent. No, I mean, I, know, I know. I would say that the the main channel, the Graham Stephan channel, is like ninety five percent accurate to me. Right. Obviously, I'm hyped up for the camera. Like, no one is that yeah. energetic yeah, yeah. and you know all the time. Yeah. Uh, second channel is more myself, just exaggerated a little bit for comedic effect. The podcast is just whatever. Podcast is but, raw. Yeah, I think you have like a different responsibility to each audience mm -hmm. on the different channels. Yeah. Like your main channel actually has a, a pretty serious responsibility at this point to deliver the information. Like the mm. information is the most important part. Is it correct? Is it easy to understand? And as you get to the Graham Stephan show, obviously it's like, it's entertainment. It just goes yeah. downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, you just going down. <laughs> yeah, you got your responsibility to clients. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was yeah. our purpose of the Graham Stephan show as well, that. because, you know, we started doing reactionary content and as well as the phone calls where mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, on occasion we'll have phone call people that, aren't really even about finance. Like the, you know, the the dating or the boy, the marriage one. Yeah. And then we also had one where a guy was gonna break up with his girlfriend because she cost too much money. 
and it was a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, the title was "Should I Break Up with My Girlfriend?" Or like, what was Wait, it? What do you mean? Should cost him a hundred? Yeah, because well, he like would go, going so on dates. Yeah, so he'd go on a, a date with her every month, one date a month, once a month. Yeah, and it would cost on average about a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> okay, and then Graham, <laughs> he's a real Graham people, is, by the way. Yeah, he's, uh, he's like Doctor yeah. Phil on these phone so calls. And he sorts it's it out, <laughs> and then that's. Yeah, this sounds like a dream show for me. Yeah, by the way. I, yeah, this okay. sounds like a blast. That's I exactly have our what own we're trying to do. Now. Yeah, we're, what I really envision for Graham on the second channel is to have something like like Maury. Like, you know, Maury Povich? <laughs> yeah. Of course. I used to yeah. Love, I okay, watched first of all, it's great entertainment, I grew, great up, drama. I grew yeah. up in the Maury era where yes. you stayed home from school, school to watch, watch Maury. Yeah. And Jerry Springer. Yeah, uh-huh. of course. Those yeah. were my favorites. So my yeah. mom hated it, yeah, though. Yeah. She hated that show. Maury my dad was good, though. Watch it. Maury was really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I learned well, a lot of my advice from Maury. You get, like, a boyfriend and a girlfriend or something, and, and they have financial troubles. They, they disagree on some, I don't know, their finances or whatever. And Graham would sort it out. I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, money's one of the biggest problems yeah. that people in relationships face. Everyone loves hearing about it. Everyone. Yeah. No one hates hearing about money. So. That's an interesting point that we could do is like, not like marriage counseling. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'm not qualified. Put it on that, your but, website. But, yeah. but like, uh, but financial matters. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people think that I'm qualified to talk about this. I'm not. But, but that's what we're trying to go. It's no, I love it. I think it's, it's great. It's funny. Like branding Graham more yeah. so as a person rather than as like a source of news. Yeah. You know, where you can mm-hmm. see Oh, Graham. I agree. But I, but I think... Yeah. After I started watching your videos again, I was like, I'm comfortable listening to you give me information. Hmm. And like over time, it's like uh, you start to develop a relationship with this person that you're like, yeah, you could, you could like, even if I'm tangentially interested in the topic, Mm. I'm like, but I enjoy listening to Graham. Oh, thanks. Do you know what I mean? Like, so that, that I think is what we're trying to get to on Mm. our channel where we have to get to a point where people are like what you you mentioned the day in the life video. It doesn't work unless people are just generally interested in Colin and Samir. And right now, we might be building towards that, but we're 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 quite a ways away from people just being like, throw me anything with these two guys in it, and I'll mm-hmm. watch it. You know, and that's it. Also, is kind of like a cruise ship. It takes a really long time to move your audience. Now we've found a format. We're mm-hmm. going to stick to this thing for. You what know, about a while. challenges that you guys can do together? Yeah, like, have we've you talked seen about those that. guys on TikTok? Where they take a top comment and then they do that thing, like yeah, go I to have. Subway. The cheeky boys, yeah, the cheeky yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah. they're they're I managed really by like uh, by uh, uh, a guy out in Venice. So really, they, they were just there. Yeah, they were just in Venice. Wow, I'm telling you, man, Venice is campus. It's okay. a college you know campus everybody. of creators. Yeah. yeah. Oh, introduce yeah. us. Jeez, I, I, I don't know. If you, <laughs> yeah, I, I we do actually know <laughs> a lot cool. of people yeah. in the creator space, which is. Uh, which is really cool. I think also because it becomes very relatable to have mm. conversations with other creators. I think that's yeah. so important. So you can empathize with each other and kind of like understand what other people are going through. Everyone's the same, I've noticed. Uh, yeah, like it's, we, all, yeah. it's all very did similar. did a video with Pokimane. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, Dude, that, um, was a, that was a yeah. great video. I sent it in our yeah. um, Slack to, to some of the people who help out with our videos oh, cool. saying, yeah. this is what I want to graduate to. Like the next time we do a video with Beast, I want to be actually on campus oh, with him. It, mm-hmm. it uh, was a nightmare like, to do that video. But there was, yeah, it was you said good. something about that, didn't you? Like, oh, it was the like, amount of work that yeah. went into that video and just the pressure and the stress. Like that morning, right. I was just like so nervous. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It was hard. Yeah. I also think it was because that's not the type of content that we're used to producing. So since it was different, it required a lot more. You know what I loved yeah. about that? Um, you guys did like a breakdown of her staff mm. in that and it was so well articulated. And that was, was one of, yeah. That, yeah. Photoshop. that was one of the most. It was your idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was Jack's idea to that, come up with that. And then I sat in Photoshop and just did like the <laughs> jankiest but thing you know what's I could crazy? come up with. Yeah. So you did that yeah. yourself. Yes. See, that's one thing that I'm always interested in is like how much of the process are, you know, a creator like yourself, yeah. who I think is like, like you're delivering like expert knowledge in a certain space. I don't necessarily consider you on first glance as like uh, an, a video editor or like someone who's like proficient oh, yeah. in Photoshop, but it's interesting to hear that you're Everything. like sitting in photo, like I'm sure yeah. a large portion of your audience is not imagining you sitting in Photoshop, oh, yeah. making those graphics. And it's a unique part of the process. I, I actually think something that'd be really yeah. fun um, is if in certain videos you like, the, the animation's going on and you like pull out of the frame and show yourself actually creating I it should be doing because that. like it, it'll it create a yeah. really deep connection where it's okay. like wait a second yeah. graham's not outsourcing this no. part of the process it, like it would humanize you now. yeah really? it would change okay. it would change the yeah. audience's relationship with you to know that when i'm watching a graphic it's graham who made that oh, and then yeah. you can make that a bit like how was my graphic 
rate yeah. it, you know, have that be a conversation. We currently have a bit like that yeah. that we're starting to add to our yeah. That's fun. Yeah, that's the reason why really I cool. never wanted like a big team or anything like that because yeah. it's just been me. And Jack so cool. is only now recently full-time. Only now. So, wow. But, Welcome, Jack, yeah. to our podcast. That was, yeah. that was 12th yeah. ever but, yeah. news. 13th ever. Yeah. 13th. Yeah. 13th. Yeah. 13th. Right. But that, news, <laughs> but that yeah. news was delivered in 12th episode, correct? Yes. That's true. Yeah. 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 12th episode. Yeah. But yeah, the main channel, I still do pretty much everything myself. Jack and I will deliberate over titles and thumbnails. And we'll mm. sit there for an hour being like, do you think this title? No. Because so, sometimes you will have an idea for a title and a thumbnail, and you'll do it, and then I'll show it to Jack. He's like, I don't like it. Interesting. And so so yeah, we, uh, crazy. We, mm-hmm. we now are pretty strict, yeah. and we won't even make the video if we can't. Title it. Title and thumbnail it. Same with me. It. And, and thumbnail it. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, we have a video that we're making uh, that we want to talk to you about. I mentioned it mm-hmm. to you about education that we've already made the thumbnail, and it's probably going to come out in three weeks. So, like, we will craft the thumbnail long before. Like, literally go out, take a photo, Photoshop mm-hmm. it, take a look mm-hmm. at it, and be like, would people click on this or no? I found the thumbnail is always something you do later. For me, it's always a title because mm. I will come up with the title first and then it make the video around that title. Got it. Uh, like one of the ones that uh, that took me a while, like I wasn't even going to make the video until I came up with the title, was I finished my duplex renovation and I was trying to think of a title because I knew this had to be like a before and after renovation video and it was not going to be big unless it had a big title to it. So I came up with the title after hours of thinking about it and I thought we thought of a thumbnail uh, but that was one of those videos. It ended up doing really well just because of the title. And I crafted the entire video around that title. Hmm. Yeah. Most videos will have to come up with the title first. Yeah. I mean, do you look at metrics on your, like, on your videos? Like, do you track? Oh, my. Like, what? don't. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. We know that yeah. if it doesn't get a certain amount of views yeah. in the first minute, right. we got to mm-hmm. change something. So, so yeah, yeah. what we do... Our whole strategy is uh, uh, first five minutes, we'll just see how the video does. Because sometimes they don't send out notifications in the first like minute mm. and it'll be you know sure. three minutes in, fine. After five minutes, if we don't see a high enough click-through rate from the, uh, the notification, we know it's a title. So we'll change the title. Wow. If we get a big spike, but all, then all of a sudden it starts dropping, we know it's a thumbnail. Because people clicked on the title from the notification, but now they're not clicking through to the video afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's thumbnail. So we'll play with the thumbnail, and sometimes it's both. Sometimes we'll get just, like, just people won't click on the video, and they don't watch the video, and we're like, well, that's yeah. the most stressful part, because you have it a is. live video, it's already posted, you can't do anything to it, right. and you have to scramble, like, you have, like, maybe 30 minutes right. yeah. to nail this, otherwise the video's done. And, and sometimes you works. change the thumbnail, and it works, we've had a lot of oh, yeah. success, mm-hmm. and then sometimes you change the thumbnail and title, and nothing happens. Yeah, right. I think what's interesting, we were talking to Thomas from Yes Theory yesterday about the ranking system that the YouTube Creator Studio has. <laughs> that it just, Why don't you explain that to yeah, everybody? Okay, so the, the ranking, ranking system, basically, when you put out a new video, YouTube ranks where it stands over the amount of time that it's been out against your other videos that you've put out. Last 10 videos. Last, Last 10. 10 videos. So basically, like we recently put out a video, I think right now, it came out two days ago or yesterday? Yesterday, and right now it's three out of 10. Good. And uh, what's it's a really interesting thing because over time it shifts based on how your videos have performed, mm. you know, five days. When your video is live for five days, it'll say in five days and 30 minutes, this has X amount of views, which ranks it number four out of your last 10 videos in five days and 30 minutes. Um, so it's become this very, they know what they're doing, uh, but it's become, you compete so much with yourself. Yeah. And I, like, I've been so hooked. We've had a couple that have hit number one number one, number one, and then you're like, number yeah. three, yeah. what the hell? Like, just obsessed. It's, yeah, Jack it's, and I yeah, have an agreement where if we get a number one, we go get happy hour sushi. Oh, that's Seriously, great. that's From our where? that's our celebration. Hinashi mm-hmm. sushi. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Graham oh, yeah. feels like good. physically ill if we get a 10. Right. Oh, like, oh yeah. Me, yeah, me too, man. Yeah. Of course. If you start, <laughs> you don't know who you are as a person. Yeah. You're like, what, I had, <laughs> what like, is going on? I seriously believe like my channel's done. I'm just, no one watches me anymore. No one cares. Right. There's what no I future. Doing? I literally yeah. have to tell them, I'm like, Graham, it's okay. Like, it's yeah. just a time. I had one video turn around though. I will tell you, there is hope. Yeah, so we, like, we've I, had felt, videos turn around. Uh, I posted a Tesla video, like like the Tesla, what is it? Tesla Model 3, like my regrets of buying a Tesla Model 3. Whatever. That was a 10 by right. far. I mean, that was half the views of like the nine. <laughs> right, and I yeah. remember that Friday night, I think we went, we went to uh, uh, a Mexican spot down the street. And I remember being so sad oh that night. Gosh, like, my man. whole night was ruined. I told Macy, I'm like, listen, 
heads up, I'm not going to be like, <laughs> seriously, up, you I think it's a, a joke. Today. Heads up, the creator <laughs> studio knows. told me it's something true. today. But that she I knows. Just, yeah. I, if I get a 10, I tell her up front, like, listen, if I'm not myself tonight, it's it's not you. It's it's a 10. It's the algorithm. It's not good. And it, it just, that was a night. The next day, it was okay. Yeah. Now that video is one of the most viewed videos on my channel. It right. just... Yeah. The algorithm decided, like, you know what, Graham? We know you. you we had a bad night. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it up to you next week. So, yeah, and I they mean, did. As yeah. a frame of reference, right now our video's been out for two days and you know x amount of hours. It's number three. Uh, our Mr. Beast video is number five mm. on this list right now. Wow. And that has nine hundred thousand views. Right. So that kicked up like five days later. Mm. Yeah, the Mr. Beast video was disappointing when we first. Yeah, released we put it out and we were like, ah. Oh, I guess no one cares. I remember thinking like, well, that's that's as much as we can possibly do. Like, yeah. This is the biggest YouTube <laughs> yeah. on the platform. And we really went for it. Like we, we gave we, it a full 14 minutes, yeah. a good title. He yeah. workshopped the thumbnail with us. Yeah, it was a really and interesting experience. And it was just experience. like, wow, if that doesn't work, I don't know what's gonna work. Yeah. And yeah. then it just picked up five days later and then just went on a rocket ship. And, and it was everything like, was okay with the world. Whoa, yeah. It's probably watch time. Or I'm guessing, yeah. what's your retention rate on that video? The, the average view duration was really good um, in the beginning. I, I think, watched I all think, the way through. I, think, like, I rarely watch the video all the way through. Nine minutes originally. Wow. Yeah, but now it's a little less. Let me look. Uh, now it's six minutes. So okay. not, not as good uh, now, but that's across you know, the past 700,000 views. So wow. um, originally it was pretty high, which was which was great. Yeah. Should we talk so, revenue? Do you want to talk let's revenue? Let's talk revenue, sure. yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much money do you guys make? What's your household, uh, uh, what, 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 what does Dave well, Ramsey AGI? say? Household income. He so, doesn't say that. What, what does he say? You're, what is Dave Ramsey's? I'm blanking. Average gross income. What's your household? I forget what he says. Jeez, never mind, guys. Ignore that joke. <laughs> Was yeah. that a joke? Is this I, was to, <laughs> I, was, I was supposed to imitate Dave Ramsey. It didn't go over well. Um, Edit that part out. <laughs> yeah, I think I think people were really surprised yeah. in our how much money YouTube uh, pays us video when we talked about our expenses. Mm. Um, I had a couple of people text me being like, yo, why are your expenses so high? Because uh, right. we said uh, we our expenses are in the hundreds of thousands. Um, which I'm saying like our, our total operating expenses, like that includes our salaries, includes our team, our... Uh, um, our, our new space that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the reality is like, we're now at a point finally where we're able to like actually do this full time as YouTube creators, mm -hmm. which was not the case over the past three years. We've been operating as like a creative agency. Um, we've been uh, like doing, uh, doing projects for other people that don't have anything to do with our YouTube channel. There's even a point where we made videos for a real estate company mm. about a building, yeah, which was super interesting. And um, yeah, now we're doing YouTube full time. YouTube, like from an AdSense perspective, it's pretty small. Like, Can I, think, I see it? Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise. Raise. in the past. Let's yeah. see. Uh, I wanna see this. See. How many people do you have working with you? So we have a full time editor uh, named Jesse. Shout out to Jesse. I know his wife. Do you know what the editing show. software Jesse uses? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, we it? all use Premiere. I mean, we're all editors. You so. all use Premiere? Yeah, we yeah. all use Premiere. Uh, I'm trying to choose what I'm going to like transition Here's to. our <clears throat> revenue over the past four <clears throat> weeks. And then you can go to Lifetime. How? How? Did you, Let me look see. at that. Well, uh, it, how is, how? So uh, do, you, do you mind if I say it? Or no, please say it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't care about this. One, uh, let, uh, let's round it up. Yeah. 1.4 million views in 28 <laughs> yeah. days, $2,800. That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make wait, any wait. sense. Can we see the... But it's our CPM. What is um, the CPM? Our CPM is probably Seconds. somewhere around $4, maybe 5 bucks. Why is it so low? Let's, let's there, check the The reason podcast. is, but, but that's what I was saying, Graham, yeah. is that you talk about money. And money has a trades at a really oh, high CPM. But, but our iced coffee hour is not yeah, we, like here. Yeah, we talk like here, about Here's the iced coffee hour. Literally 130,000 views, $1,000. thousand yeah. bucks, right. Mm. And what, what CPM um, are you guys at? Our revenue. Got it. Australia. Yeah. Hey, guys from Australia. You guys are trading at over double RCPM, almost triple. Yeah, yeah but, but even then, that doesn't make sense. I think even uh, double. Why? Are you, you know why I think mm -hmm. it is? You're not putting uh, mid roll ads in your videos. Yeah, we're blasting mid roll. So yeah, we just, you are? Yeah. Okay. You, you just started. But why is your ad revenue going up? What do you we're, see? We're not built Dude, for this. Even double. Because even double. Well, the monetized playbacks are, what's their. Because they got about a million. Yeah, but they got nine times what we have. Even if we're double, they should be 
four times. There's, we have videos yeah. that also trade at like a $2 CPM. See, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, if I show you our CPMs, you'll be Maybe really interested it. in um, our video called How Much you, Money YouTube Pays Us yeah. is a $10 CPM. Our Mr. Beast video is a $4 CPM. So we range in CPMs because basically YouTube's saying how much, how, like what type of advertiser should go on mm. this? When you look at your channel, like I get a lot of Amazon FBA yeah, <laughs> uh, ads on guys. your channel. I love this. And guys. you're generating like significant mm. revenue on, um, on, on those ads because they're yeah. paying a higher premium. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't we, understand we, that. You, you need to be from, paid way more. Well, from our wow. from our beginning days on YouTube, um, we always said we never, ever, ever will base any part of our business. We will never attribute AdSense revenue to any part of our business. Like we will mm. never say AdSense <clears> covers <throat> our rent. AdSense allows us to hire a new employee because it's too variable. So we'll never do that. I would disagree with that because AdSense, I think, my theory is that that is going to be correlated to the algorithm. I think YouTube is a business, mm -hmm. obviously, and I think they're going to be promoting content that not only makes them look good, but is also good for advertisers. So yeah. I think if you make monetizable content that also happens to pay well, the algorithm is going to see this and be like, ooh, we can make a little bit more money from this. That's how I see yeah, it. I, and the algorithm yeah. is just as variable. Yes, it is. So, and so that that's yeah. what I'm saying is that I think that We've never, we haven't seen it yet. Granted, we're friends with a lot of creators who, I mean, do super well on AdSense. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure your main channel uh, is pretty significant yep. from an AdSense perspective. Uh, we've never experienced it where AdSense is significant. It doesn't matter if we do a couple million views in a month. It doesn't matter if, you know, it's it's like, again, we make some videos that do pretty well and it's just like, huh, I mean, not that significant. Yeah. We've made more money in AdSense this month, even though it's not much than we've ever made before more money yeah. this month than ever. Yeah. And part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that three out of our last five videos have to do specifically with money. Right. Yeah. So I think that's that's one thing. But, you know, we're lucky to have a very significant brand partnership with Samsung. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really changes the way that we operate. Yeah. Uh, we also have long-term partnerships with uh, Storyblocks and a couple other brands. And so that allows us to have recurring revenue that then bases like how we're operating as a business and lets us experiment. We've just moved into the direct to consumer space mm -hmm. um, with our paid educational course. What is that? So it's, an, it's not sponsored. Yeah, it's an, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna plug it every time I okay. get, but cool. uh, it's a, it's a uh, online storytelling course. It's about our process of coming up with ideas and, and filmmaking and um, how we basically uh, brainstorm and craft an idea before we turn on a camera. Uh, so it's a very extensive process, an hour and a half of content. We're adding to it throughout this year. That is selling at a hundred dollar price point. Mm -hmm. It's been out for a week and we've been able to convert 265 people uh, to purchase that course uh, in the past week. And so oh, no. for us, that's a really interesting model. I think that's where we fit in more naturally. We feel like we are kind of educators. Yeah. We feel like we're building a relationship with our audience where they are willing to pay to uh, uh, learn from us and to be a part of our community and to yeah. workshop ideas. And uh, we see ourselves as being able to turn into kind of a modern day film school and mm -hmm. a modern day, um, you know, media academy. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where, when I look at our revenue, like I definitely think we'll have uh, brand partners like a Samsung that's just like, we're with them. They're like our, our uh, ambassador brand or we're ambassadors for them. Um, but I don't see the content that we're making being that advertise like ad supported or advertising Got based. It. I think we'll probably move into direct to consumer content. So you really want to make this then eventually about yourselves, like where you have your own audience where people right. follow you for you. Yeah. Well, okay. I think always within the context of uh, you know our, our mission, the mission statement that we have is to educate and empower the next generation of storytellers. Mm -hmm. And so for us, whenever we're talking about ourselves, is in the context of helping others um, become creators as well. So like when we talk about how much YouTube pays us, the goal of that video is to educate people on how we view creator businesses and how you could diversify a creator business and how you should be looking at it if you are an aspiring creator. Um, and after we made that video, the interesting thing was we had a ton of outreach from career creators, creators with uh, millions of subscribers reaching out about consulting and mm -hmm. saying, could you guys yeah. maybe consult? Something I us? actually talked to uh, Jack about earlier today. Yeah. yeah. So that was a really interesting experience to be like, oh, okay, uh, maybe we do view this space a little different and maybe we do have experiences that um, are valuable to mm -hmm. career creators. Yeah. Um, Even if they don't result in the best titles and thumbnails for the masses. I mean, to, to close the loop on like yeah. money, like 
No, I think in total now we've made twelve thousand dollars on YouTube AdSense. Okay, um, which is obviously not enough to to pay our bills. So yeah. um, our brand deals are really what we can't say exactly how much those pay us, but you know, again, our our expenses are are in the in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we're able to. I would us. say you got to post more. Yeah, we that's do. my thing. Yeah. Post twice a week, maybe even three times. That's a week. overwhelming to think yeah. about. That is, but we know that that is important. Yeah. We're trying to. Um, you know, Rode, the, the company that has yeah. all these mics is sending us podcast gear. And so we're trying to sort out like, how can we have a more frequent, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, every video has to be a banger for the Yeah, algorithm. it does. Like you yeah. can't throw in like right. a crappy episode in the middle of the week because that'll screw up the next video. Totally, yeah. I'm really so, impressed yeah. with your output. Like, are you constantly making episodes or do you have days where you're like, I'm going to shoot three today and then we're going to. No, almost never. You shoot every day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we got a new video posting every single day between three channels. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's just me and Jack. Main channel is just me. We collaborate on titles, thumbnails. Second channel, Jack edits. So you edit the videos. main channel too? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. And I was editing the second channel until just recently. Start to wow. finish with yeah. the first channel. How long does a video About take? 12 hours a video. Yeah. So you got to think. But 12, and that, that includes days where it's just like you just feel like crap and you don't feel like doing anything and you're frustrated yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. five hours goes by and there's nothing to talk about and you're like, it's 11 a.m. now. I've wasted all this time. What am I doing with my life? Should I take the day off? No, I can't afford to do that. Let, let's keep mm. going. So that includes a lot of downtime like mm. that. But yeah, about 12 hours from start to like once I hit on a topic from research, planning, filming, editing, title, thumbnail, answering comments, about 12 hours. A video. Wow. Reaction videos are easy. That's right. Jack usually finding a video. And saying, watch it. Yeah. That's about 40 minutes. Those are also yeah. really fun to watch. Um, I know you did one with uh, Shelby Church video that I really yeah. liked. Yeah. That one did mm-hmm. so well. Yeah. That yeah. was great. That was it's, great because Shelby's awesome. So yeah. it's just like all in all a very cool video. Oh, yeah. I like the yeah. like the weirder videos mm. like that. Like that was a bit like living on a boat for $600 yeah, a yeah. month. Like I like those over the Millennial Money episodes now at this point. I like Millennial Money when they were bad. Right. And in mm-hmm. a bad sense, like people were blown money left and right. Like, right, right. really cover, cover someone who's making like 70 grand a year in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. spending 80. Like that's the right. person I want to see. Right, yeah. right. You know, going yeah. to the clubs. She's like, yeah, yeah every Friday <laughs> night, like, I don't know, a hundred bucks on drinks, 50 on food, what Uber you, back. That's what I like What saying. do you spend the most money on? Uh, probably food at this point. And even that, well, are we not talking like housing? Yeah, I think just like in day to day. Just day to day? Yeah. Uh, food. I would say, but even yeah. that's like, like Macy and I got the cheesecake factory the other night, but what we do is we'll get like a, like a big thing and then split it. So that was like right. $30. Yeah. I think food and coffee like, yeah. is just coffee for me. is like, yeah. I love going out for coffee. That's like my number know. one. It's not for you. No. Uh-uh. You make it. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, Cause you don't like me. the experience. Wait, you go out for I coffee. think it's a waste of money. That's what I honestly It is, yeah, but yeah. that's why I bring it up. Cause I think about it every time I buy a coffee. I'm like, I don't, wow. This yeah. is like, I did the calculation of like, you do it. How often do you go out and get a cup of coffee? Every day. How much does and it cost? And it's expensive. You? you go to Groundwork, I'm guessing, right? Don't go to Groundwork. But okay. I do go to uh, Minotti's, which is, which I love. I when Intelligentsia was open, I went to Intelligentsia. Yeah, Intelligentsia was expensive. Yeah, Damn, man. That's a cool that's, place. That's, that's Are you working saying. from there or you just go there for well, the coffee? Well, when, when I was, I would. But like I, that is a part of my ritual that I'm not yeah. really willing to compromise on. And I've just like <laughs> baked that into my expenses where I'm just like, I can't. I can't not do that. It's so easy to not, but yeah. I'm like, that's something I love. I yeah. can't. I can't. Do that. I used to go five days a week, but it was a mistake. Yeah. Like you I, stopped. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of that though had to do with uh, quarantine and. and yeah. Food. So but I, I think it's I think it's a good yes. thing though because yeah. I just started having cold brew at home and now I save yeah. that money and it's yeah. great. The only reason now I spend so much on food and I would say at this point maybe I don't know a hundred bucks a week. Do you think maybe about how much do you spend? Yeah, probably. maybe maybe eighty to one hundred dollars a week, uh, just going out to eat is because. When everything is shut down and like you're working from home all day long, you don't really leave the house. Like that is your treat to be like, okay, I'll go out to dinner and we can mm-hmm. like you know have a meal. Yeah. So that that's my like, totally my my thing. Yeah. Now is doing yeah. that, but otherwise, like for coffee, I just think it's a waste of money. Yep. I don't see the experience of it unless you're going to work there or unless yeah, you're going to meet mm-hmm. somebody and right. it's like a hangout spot. Fine. Uh, but also, I believe for a lot of people, I'm not accusing you of anything. But for a lot of people, Feels accusatory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Accusatory. I think but, you're about to accuse me. <laughs> for a lot of people in this area, uh, no, I'm kidding. 
Um, no, for a lot of people, <laughs> when they spend money on coffee and they just figure, oh, you know, it's what's five yeah. bucks, six dollars yeah, yeah. every now and then, usually they let that spill over into other areas because it's never usually just the coffee. Mm, usually, interesting. It, usually yeah. it's, the it's the coffee and the biscuit, or it's the coffee and something else. Or oh, I went to coffee. Let's 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 spend a little money over here, and you you yeah, go, you, go and you, you get one of those little food things. Ugh. Ramsey, please. Wow, he does. Earthquake. <laughs> I didn't think Jack, it was earthquake. I thought there was the... someone outside <laughs> can't see rattling Ramsey. the door, and I was like, oh my God, guys, what are we about to go through together? <laughs> oh my God. No, so like, this cat. Is, is Graham doing this like a cat, prank for us right now? This cat is just, he's, oh, <laughs> hey, Macy, it's fine. We're going to open it. Uh, this is Macy. Hi, Macy. I think we, I think we met uh, yes. uh, on yes. Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, anyway, so yeah. back to my point. What I'm saying is this. It's same thing with with when you just go and like you buy a new shirt. It's never just you go and buy a new shirt. It's you go and buy a pair of pants with it. You go and buy a new car. It's never mm. just a new car. Then it's like, oh, let me get some of the upgrades. You buy a new house. And it's like, yeah. let's buy new furniture. It, mm. it it starts with the coffee, and then it's always little you things know, here. That's usually how it is. I had that point. feeling when yeah. when we uh, when we first scoped out renting this new studio. Like as I was financially planning for it, I was like, all right, we're gonna sign a year long lease, so mm -hmm. I have to be prepared for that. But then additionally. When you get a new space, you have to get things in that space. Mm -hmm. And additionally, when you're video creators, we also want to make the sound as good as possible, the lighting as good as possible. Um, and so I think a lot of times when I was younger, I overlooked that, that, okay, I'm, I'm renting a new space and that's the cost is the rent every month for the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. But then you start to recognize like there are so many costs associated with having this new studio that you, um, actually have to plan for in advance. Yep. And I think that is, uh, yeah, that's just something that happens. And I never thought about that with coffee, like where if I'm going out for coffee every day, I'm like out and about, which means I'm probably more likely right. to then make another purchase. And, you know, if I'm comfortable spending five bucks a day, what's another three, what's another five, what's another six. And then it yeah. adds up. That's super interesting. That's why I like the home office so much. Yeah. So I'll, sh I'll show you my studio and it after this, but yeah. it's just that room right there. Right. And then this. That's it. And in my previous place, it was the garage. I just yeah. transformed the whole garage into a studio. It was awesome. It just saves huh. a lot of money doing stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I, I have a question for you. Yeah. If uh, yeah. we can ask you a couple of questions. You can here. ask me whatever you Great. want. Yeah. So speaking of saving money, um, we just watched your video today about uh, you not going to college. And oh, that was an old video. Yeah. yeah. Watching yeah. the old video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Watching What's, the deep yeah. tracks. Okay. Uh, and curious about your um, position on like what's happening with college now. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously it's a very different situation. A lot of this college is Zoom based, uh, but tuitions are kind of staying similar. Yeah. So what is your position on, or like, what do you think about? I think it's, college? I think it's stupid, but now I'm very biased yeah. on college because I just, I was, I always had an aversion towards school. I hated school. I just didn't get the point. For me, my mind works like very practically. It's like, how is this going to help me get my end goal? Wh whatever that might be. And if this doesn't help me do that, I just don't see the point in it. Uh, so for me, it's college seems like it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. That's how I felt. And a lot of what you learn, at least for me, was online. It's like watching YouTube videos, like reading the internet. If there's something you want to know, just Google. You could Google whatever you want to know. And there are people talking about it. You want to network with people who are doing exactly what you want to do? Biggerpockets.com for real estate investing. There's stock market forms out there. Whatever you want to do, there's a community around it online. I feel like you could learn anything you want to through these people. But that's that's what I, I I think college is a waste of money. And I think especially right now, people are realizing, like, wait a second, I can learn everything I need to online. Um, it, it can help in certain industries. I think if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or you have an end goal where a college degree is just opens a door for you. But I think for most people, if your goal is just, I want to make money, or I want to be my own boss, and I want to do my own thing, I don't think it's necessary. Jack might have a different opinion on this, though. Uh, yeah, I think that college, I have, I obviously, like, plays it with a little bit higher of, like, on the important scale. Like, I think college is, is very important for a lot of people. And uh, I think if you don't necessarily know what you want to do, college has, like, benefits, and it also, and maybe it doesn't make sense. But I think that, like, Overall, even if you're not learning material that's necessarily applicable in like a specific job, having a degree shows an employer that you have some sort of discipline and you have like, maybe you're like, you have good enough work ethic. And obviously if you graduated from like a, uh, a better college, then they say, oh, this guy's worked hard consistently throughout their entire life. You know, maybe they're very reliable in the workforce. I think, yeah, like I, yeah. I think college is a fairly important thing. 
I mean, yeah, I had a blast in college, so, but I'm very intrigued now, or I wasn't that great of a, mm. I, I was actually, I was not a good student. Mm. I couldn't do well in the classroom, but I liked being, I liked the social setting of college a lot. Uh, and like my ability to just like make friends and, and network and like a lot of those people I'm still really close with. Mm. So that was a really fun part. But for me now, when I look at it, I think I would have taken a gap year probably and reevaluated and like given myself one year to evaluate if I should go to college or not, mm, yeah. which I think probably will start to happen more now. I think you'll start to see more people take a gap year, especially after this. I want to see YouTube make a YouTube Academy. Mm. Of, if, if you want a skill set, what YouTube should do is create a whole course around it. Like you want to be a plumber, for instance. Right. You could watch these videos. At the end of every video, there's going to be a test. At the end of that, there's going to be like a whole, you know, mm. something you could do maybe in person to prevent cheating, like the real estate exam. Like it's right. all done online. And then you right. have one state <laughs> test, which is monitored. Right. Google could, could seriously like pump out their own like graduates if they really wanted to. Yeah. For coding, is, but like a anything. I think that's I something think. that we'll yeah. actually see is like the partnering of like Google with universities right, and that. Scott Galloway's talked about this, yeah. uh, but about like Google partnering with MIT to offer remote online certifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's not gonna be for probably like plumbing, yeah. um, but they can just scale their business that way. But here's yeah. what I did, I, I never understood too. Like let's say a professor, he's giving a lecture to 70 people. He could do the same thing online and 200,000 people can watch him. Jordan Peterson, was one of the people that mentioned this that he just he was a professor right mm -hmm. and he was giving lectures and realized that all of a sudden he could make videos on these topics and reach hundreds of thousands or millions of people with his yeah. video and it got to a certain point where he just there wasn't enough value to give in person because his time was wasted instead of putting himself online mm -hmm. But the challenge there is that like a lot of educators aren't entertainers and a lot of entertainers aren't educators. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think bridging that gap, the few, the select few who can do that well, uh, I think can okay. win. So here's what I'm going to say. Yeah. To educate, you need to entertain because otherwise people are yeah. going to zone out. I think 100%. even the best yeah. professors yeah. Yeah, that's the true. best entertainers. That's true. Oh yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, you're right. Do you consider, have you ever thought, because you're essentially a personal finance professor, yeah. have you ever thought about offering a course behind a paywall? Uh, I do. I have two. Oh, you do? Yeah. So we have the YouTube Creator Academy down below in the description, guys. <laughs> that and was a plug. And the Real Estate Agent Academy. I'm glad you asked about that. that. Was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it yeah, that was a layup. Mentorship program. Oh, and we have the mentorship program linked down below in the description where you could talk to Jack and I twice a week. Jack, three times a week. Link down below if in the description. If you're going through a divorce, <laughs> all these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Marriage counseling, too. Yeah. Whatever you need. Yeah. No, so we, we, when, yeah, so yeah, when we, did you start doing that? And Oh, yeah. geez. That was the scariest thing. I waited until I hit 100,000 subscribers before I monetized a single thing. I was mm. running ads on the videos, mm. but I chose purposely never to sell anything until I hit 100,000 because mm. I wanted to prove that like I wanted to do this on my own, get to 100K. Uh, shortly after 100,000, I came out with the YouTube, uh, no, not the YouTube, the Real Estate Agent Academy. And uh, that was a program that would teach people how to become a real estate agent and grow their business. And that was the scariest thing because I made fun of people who sold programs on YouTube. Like that was my thing is like, I'm not going to be that guy who sells programs. And I would poke fun at them and I'd like, you know, call them out. And then I realized like, wait a second, it's not all scammy. I paint, I put myself in a corner now where like, it makes sense. People are asking for more content that just doesn't make sense for me to put on YouTube. That's too niche. I'm spending all this time doing this. So I spent six months creating this thing. And the amount of work that went into that was a nightmare. Uh, it went live. So I got an email list. So what I did, created an email list for MailChimp. And I said, for anyone who's interested in this, just put your email address down below. I think I got like 800 people who signed wow. up in like a day. And I sent out this email blast. I priced it $497. And I think I offered... $150 off or like something like that for the people in the first 24 hours. Guess how many sales I got out of seven, 800 people. 650. 650 people? Yeah. No. That'd be a crazy you, high conversion. Guess? 300? <laughs> One. Wow. Really? One person. Why do you think that is? Do you think the price point was too high? Uh, price point was too high and I didn't understand what I was doing. Mm. So the discount was not enough. Um, the email list, about half the people even opened the email to begin with. There was really no urge. Like, I made so many mistakes with this program that I, I fixed them on the next one. But yeah, even to this day, the Real Estate Agent Academy was probably the most intensive thing I've done mm, in terms of information and content. Very cool. But it's too niche. Yeah. Um, and there's just not that many people want to be a real estate agent. And I just missed the huh. mark on marketing and just everything that I then fixed on the YouTube Creator Academy. So the wow. Creator Academy is the most successful offering you have? Yeah. 
And how, where do you sell that through? Is it through your Teachable. website? Oh, through Teachable. That's through Teachable. Cool. Nice. Yeah, 99 bucks a month on Teachable. 99 bucks and, a month? Yeah, it's how many yeah, for and, Teachable. Oh, oh. It. wait, for the no, students? That's, no, no, that's oh, what oh, I pay. That's what you pay. That's okay. my overhead. What, what's the... What's the cost for the students, or like what's the price? Um, so price? it ranges three ninety seven if there's no sales. I like to do a sale every now and then on like a major holiday, mm-hmm. and I'll do I think it's two hundred dollars off. Got so it. I'll get it cool. one ninety seven on like those are usually like the Black Friday sales, Christmas. Have you ever yeah. thought about like a membership where it's like recurring? That, yes, that's why we have the mentorship group down <laughs> below in the description. <laughs> another layout. Well. Yeah. yeah, that was another layout. So, this so is. that's something. So that's something too that I realized <laughs> is that I was doing these uh, like the YouTube Creator Academy, the Real Estate Agent Academy. Typically, what most marketers would tell you is that you have like a low costing, like under $500 yeah. yep. to get people in. And then I'm supposed to have an upsell after that where they buy the three ninety seven. let's just say. That's the biscuit with the coffee. Right. Yeah. And, and then I'm supposed to offer something at fifteen to $2,000, right. like some premium package. Yeah, yeah. And then that's a funnel to get people to spend 20000 spend right. 50000 So far, I've just been against that. Usually yeah. I find that just to be a little sketchy. And from what I've seen, a lot of people, it's just, I don't feel good. I want to offer, like, here's the price you pay. It's everything you need to know. There's not going to be like, ooh, now, now to learn more, you need this. Yeah. yeah. So, and and because I didn't have anything else on the back end that I was supposed to have, created the mentorship program, or at least cool. it's it's recurring. But that's also a lot of time that goes into that, too, because yeah. it's a community of people. We Oh, that, that was a Zoom call I did right before you came here when mm. I said I had the Got live stream yeah, until yeah, yeah. 6. That's every Thursday. From 5 to 6 p.m. and every Sunday from 9 to 10 a.m. No matter what, I'm wow. always doing this. And how many people are on those? Uh, it depends. Usually, like worst case, 20, most 40. Wow. Usually. That's a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. That's cool. That's awesome, man. It's a fun community. And That's it's great. just like now you become friends with everybody because you see them like twice a week yeah. since the beginning of the years when you started this up. So like you have to think twice a week since, I don't know, seven months ago. You get to know these people mm. and like you, you start to become friends with them. Very cool. Yeah. And, and is do you see like direct-to-consumer content offerings as a big path for you in the future? I don't know. Uh, because it's a lot of time to create something. Like yeah, People have asked me to, to make like a house hacking course or like a real estate investing yeah. course. I just don't have the energy to do it. I was so burnt out from the last oh, yeah. one. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Crazy. It's, it's, a, it's like yeah. making a movie. Yeah, uh, it is. It's like making a feature film. It's, yeah. really, it's really Well, difficult. for my YouTube one, it's about nine hours of content. Oh my God. And it's a similar format to like my, my YouTube videos. So imagine making like nine hours of YouTube oh, videos yeah, that's at crazy. the same time as you're making YouTube videos yeah, and yeah. planning it out and having it be good because my biggest fear is that people buy it is like this shock. Oh, I was and terrified then, yeah. the night before we went right. live. I was terrified. Yeah. Uh, I was so relieved to see someone be like, yeah. this was awesome. I was like, oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. Thank God someone thought it was good. Oh, yeah. But you, you I, I've always felt like if, if they buy it at, let's say, 300 bucks, yeah. you have to give $600 worth of value. I agree. Because yeah. if they get what they pay for, they're going to be like, eh, because nah, nah, right. they know what to expect. But if you exceed their expectations, that's when they're like, this was really good. Right. So, yeah, I'm burnt out on that. Maybe at some point I might do it, but I just physically, I can't put myself, mentally, I would, I would go nuts. Um, what are your, like, maybe you've said this on your mm-hmm. channel, but I'm just curious, what are your goals with with YouTube? Like, where do you want to Still trying to it? figure it out. I don't know. Um, I want to not burn out is number yeah. one. I want to keep, I want to keep this going as long as I can. And I look at people like Kevin O'Leary yeah. or like Mark Cuban, mm-hmm. who have become like these personalities, just them. So I really like that, but I also want to do more than just, uh, be in front of a camera all the time. Like, I think at some point yeah. I'd want to start a business. I don't know what, mm-hmm. something, uh, something about saving money or like credit cards or Something like that. I just don't know what it is yet. Financial freedom movement. What's financial freedom? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, is, yeah, yeah. Jake, that was Jake. Jake. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry, that was a bad joke. It was a very movement. YouTube yeah. specific <laughs> joke. Uh, anyway, didn't, Gosh, didn't land. Yeah. Didn't land. Uh, my my Dave yeah. Ramsey joke didn't land yeah. yet, so we're even though. That's all right. We're even. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like a, a, I, a business would be the next vertical to go to because now it's like you have an audience. Sure. And there's no marketing expense on that. And if I could create something that saves people money in some way or another, like it's a no brainer. Mm-hmm. Like I look at the Honey app, for instance. Oh yeah. And I'm like, that saves money. I want to make a Honey app. Yeah. And you look at the amount of work. And my other thing is too, I hate I hate being like really stressed out. Yeah. So I like like my current schedule. I'm I'm it's a little bit of stress, but it's manageable. Right. But I like just being laid back. Dude, and me, just like casual. Me too, like, man. That's, yeah. that's something we've been talking about. Like we obviously there's so many directions we can take what we're doing right now, and there's been a lot of people who have contacted us and want to mm. you know do something and 
Um, you just have to evaluate the lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's a trade-off. Like at the, at the core of it, yes, money is a currency, but time is also the right. actually the most significant currency because you can never get it back. You can always make more money. Right. But you can't make more time. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's more important, at least now for me, is, is this personal fulfillment and feeling like I'm at least doing something that when I'm gone, yeah. like people would remember like, oh, they grabbed Steph and yeah, I, I saved some money and, you yeah. know, because of his <laughs> advice. Yeah, That's what I want. Yeah. You know, um, but it's it's doing something a little bit more significant at some point in the future. But right now, it's like I just want to keep going and expanding and growing. I, I don't feel like I'm done growing yet. Yeah, totally. On that to move on to something else quite yet. Right. How are we doing on time? Are we missing anything? We're at one thirty on time, which is fine. How many mid roll ads have played at this yeah, point? We <laughs> honestly we don't load these up with ads too much. So one thing that okay. I I really like about your guys' content is how you do deep dives on specific creators and why they're so successful in their space. What would you guys say about Graham? Why exactly you think he does so well in the finance community? And if you guys could give Graham any advice on like hmm. how he could better market himself or grow his channel brand? Oh, cool. love that. That's fun. Yeah, I think to start, the success comes from the value that's in each video. Uh, and you've stuck to a similar audience each mm -hmm. time. Uh, and like Samir said before, it's so transformational. There's nothing like more transformational than money and having more of it. And so I think uh, that's where I would start with, with you, with why it's so successful is because there's so much value and it has to do with a topic that's so transformational for so many people. Mm -hmm. I also think when it comes to the content that you're, um, like when you're, when you're making a video, um, one thing that we talk about is like you want stakes to rise over time. And so when I'm watching one of your videos, I don't want to click off because I'm there for the long haul. Mm. I'm there to hear every bit of information that you're telling me. And it typically culminates in the piece of information that I was there for, but that might come 17 minutes later. Um, and because of that, your AVD is high. And when your average view duration is high, you're, I mean, like people are sitting there listening to you talk, potentially looking at the screen and like looking into your eyes and hearing you talk for mm. 20 minutes, um, that develops a relationship that is different from a lot of personal relationships. It's pretty rare outside of the context of us. We've been sitting here for an hour and a half yeah. talking to each other. But outside of that, there's only a few people in your life that you listen to. That's true. For 20 minutes yeah. and look into their eyes. Yeah. Uh, and that develops a very intimate relationship with an audience. Mm. Um, different from a channel like ours that's like heavy editing and, and you know, you, you're getting an, a very edited version of kind of us and our storytelling. You're getting a pretty raw version of you. Mm -hmm. And I think that keeps people coming back. Mm -hmm. And then when you pair that with the concept of the value that you're delivering and the fact that you can change my life, when I come to your channel, if I watch your channel over time, like you said, if you save me money, you've just changed my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually investing time in watching Graham and mm -hmm. coming out on the other side a better version of myself. It's the most transformational. You should write a sales pitch yeah. for this. Jeez. <laughs> so I think wow. when you look at the value prop of watching your channel, it's yeah. all there. Right. Um, and I think that's what's so dynamic about why you've amassed millions of people watching mm -hmm. you, of course, uh, is because of all those things. I mm. think your next frontier is understanding that people are sitting with you for 20 minutes and um, pushing the limits of your own personality and your own personal um, touch into the videos. In what way? I think just adding a little bit more about, like like we talked about before, of like making yourself bigger than the topic um, over time. Mm -hmm. And that's not immediate, but I think there's a world where people start to get, um, like where where you can, like these types of podcasts and stuff, what, th having this format is really smart because you can have a raw version of Graham. Mm. Uh, and then as you add in more of your personality into your main channel, it's gonna convert audience members over to this channel who just want more Graham. Yeah. Uh, Cause once I'm used to having like that 20 minute dose of Graham three times a week, um, you're delivering me topics about finance, about how I can save money. But over time, if I'm less concerned about you saving me money and more like I want Graham five times a week, mm. then you're going to convert more of those audience members over to the other channels. That's interesting. Uh, huh. And so that's what I would say is going to be the X factor of converting, having three channels that are all like significant mm -hmm. um, at the same scale as your main channel is when uh, your personality outgrows the topics. That was really well said. Jeez. Yeah, it seems like you like wow. recited yeah. that. Yeah, you planned that out, man. Brain. I wish I could talk <laughs> yeah. like that. Did you, uh, did you talk on relationship advice? No, that is also another thing that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, as much relationship advice. As <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think yeah, that's the other thing because I think 
money and relationships mm-hmm. are probably the things that that everybody will go through at some point. So, yeah. and, and I think those are the biggest. Talk. That's why people watch Jerry Springer and totally, Maury yeah, and Doctor yeah. Phil, and they love to be like that fly on the wall, be like, I, "Look how dysfunctional this is." I think I kind of so want to see you yeah. go through more experiences too as an audience member. Like, I love mm. I, me personally. I thought the Pokemon video was so cool because I got to see you outside of your normal environment, yeah. and you were going t- through an experience. So, I think watching you go through an experience, like it's why. I don't know, like it's why like cooking content is fun to watch because you're watching someone take something from nothing mm-hmm. to something. Yeah. And it's why like some of those videos pop off on YouTube, like turning one dollar into a thousand dollars or something yeah. like that. When you um, mean experiences, what do you what do you That's kind of like, what I mean? Like, are we talking like, like new new types of content? Like can you can you uh you're giving me a lot of information, yeah, but can I watch you discover new information, which then allows mm. me to discover that new information? Yeah. Right. So when you went into Pokemon's house, I'm discovering new information at the same pace as you discovering that new information. Okay. You're the vehicle for me to discover new information. Okay. Uh that is an example of an experience. So if, if you could do that more with, like if you pick a topic and you're like, okay, this is a topic where I could sit and tell you this, or this is a topic where I could go through the experience and show it to you. That's cool. Um, okay. That's where I think like if you add that format in, then I'm getting to know you better because naturally, you know, when you're interacting with Pokemon, I'm getting to know you through that experience mm. because I'm watching you interact with someone else. That's well said. Yeah, well, we plan to do more like that. That's yeah. exactly one of the reasons why we did the Pokemon thing is because it was totally out of the ordinary for yeah. Graham's type of content. And, and we demographic, wanted to, I mean, yeah, so yeah, yeah no totally kidding. different than any we, money related thing. Yeah, We wanted to just introduce Graham's like finance heavy audience into a different kind of video and see if they liked it. Mm-hmm. And if they did, then that's great because that means that Graham can do what he wants and he'll still get views yeah. because he's Graham. Totally. Not necessarily mm-hmm. because he's consistently putting out the mm-hmm. same you, like informative. You ever videos. watch uh, the prophet Marcus Lemonis's video? No, I what's I it called? His, his, I called it a video. It's a television show. Um, but anyway, it's it's basically like he goes into struggling businesses and helps them turn things around. Mm. Uh, but it's, he gets into like the nitty gritty of like their PL sheets and like how it all works. It's a really fun video to watch. All right, video again. It's yeah. a really fun show to watch. Yeah. Um, my fiance is not interested in business in the least, but she's grown to love Marcus Lemonis and will watch him turn around any business, anything. Kind of like Gordon Ramsay with his it's, business it's, or Mike yeah. Rowe with dirty yes, jobs. Yeah. Exactly. It's just like when that host becomes bigger than the subject of the video, then it's like the the audience gets interested in whatever the host is doing. Yeah. And that's like a a really interesting turning point. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's what's next, I guess. (laughs) That would be a good segue. That would be a good transition into whatever's after that. Yeah. Like if you could, if you could, I think a really cool series would be really tough to develop and you'd have to have people who are really interested in it. But if you came in and helped you know, creators or a person save up for something. And it was a series that happened over we, time. We want to invite random people yeah. where I could go over their finances and just roast them. Like, I want to be Judge Judy. Yeah, but, but like, help them. But then, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> roast them first. That sounds like a second channel. Roast them first and then but, help them but out. But if episode yeah, one, yeah, yeah, if episode one is roasting them and yeah. then you set financial goals and then you track those with them over mm-hmm. time and you get them to the point where they're saved enough to do something amazing, like, that's going to connect me to you times 10, mm. right? Because it's like, whoa, I just watched Graham go through this experience. I saw his, how he interacts with people. Right. I saw him at his, you know, when he's angry, when he's sad, when he's like, once you get those uh, human elements added in, then it's like, well, I'm really connected to mm. Graham now. Got to start a daily vlog. Yes, that's, I mean, you probably could do it. We can't do that. Oh, that's so really boring. hard for us. Yeah, it's really hard it's, for us. It's me sitting in a computer for yeah. like seven Every hours Every day, all right, yeah. guys, now I'm going to sit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be interesting just to live stream that twenty, like mm-hmm. not twenty four hours a day, obviously, but like nine hours a yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I just have a camera, just always going. Totally. Yeah. What do you guys think we could do to make the podcast better? Nice coffee hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I would recommend, uh, similar to what Samir's talking about for your YouTube videos, but coming up with some structure and some format around them that make uh, the format of the show itself almost more valuable than the episode, if that makes sense. So that like the audience has an idea of what to expect from each show, whether like, you know, at this point we know we're at the halfway point. uh, And at the end, we always answer this one question from a viewer or something like that. Like just having a better understanding of where it's going to go with some branded moments. So that as an audience member, I know where I am. Yeah, like it could that. be That's it good. could be something like you guys are mentioning how much money the show has made. Mm-hmm. If you let the guest invest in 
like 10% of how much you've made in something and they get to choose. Oh, that'd be and, fun. And, okay. I don't know, just like fun things and then like, or like the audience. save that amount towards the end. Yeah. We could invest that in something. Like yeah. Some really yeah. speculative. Because that's, yeah. that's interesting if you invest that. it and then week over week you're tracking something and like the audience can actually play the game too. They can look at how the stock's doing do or that. they can see. I think that's really yeah. fun. And if the guest can chime in and do something with it, I think that's really interesting. So uh-huh. like those interactive segments where, um, there's three people or there's three groups involved in the podcast. There's the guest, there's the host, and there's the audience. So how does the audience get involved in what mm. we're doing? Do they submit questions in advance? Uh, do they get to ha- chime in on where the investment goes? Do they get to guess how much money every week? Like, what is that element of- It's just like building like, more IP around the show. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So that even if you have the biggest guest in the world, they still are here to fit into your show. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been wanting to throw in some recurring right. segments. Exactly. Might have been pretty weak. Like, for example, every single week we do an update on, um, you know, how much money the podcast mm-hmm. has made. And then I also do an update on how my options trading has been going because I started doing options trading at the beginning, which mm-hmm. is kind of investing at the beginning of the podcast. And then I give updates every week, which, by the way, guys, I'm seven for seven. So I haven't lost money on the, yeah, seven trades, all seven trades that I've done. Right. So we had an idea uh, every week. I think it would be fun if Jack brings on a Tinder date. That's a great idea. <laughs> there's yeah, an idea. That's, yeah, that's, there's an idea. You or approve, you yeah. get to pick his date for the week or the audience. I don't know. Something fun like that. That that's would be, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah, that's we were joking about that. Yeah. 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 Graham gets to pick your date for the week. I yeah, think that'd that be interesting. Be funny. Yeah. Or, gra- have, or Graham like, gets to, op- yeah. or the guest gets to respond to, you know, yeah. gets to go into oh, your yeah, Tinder and, have, and like have them, DM. Have them ask questions that you have to ask the Tinder date. That would be super fun. Like yeah, awkward. Be great. <laughs> the yes. are gonna be brutal. Whatever, the, whatever the questions are, you guys have to talk. Yeah, or about. like you hand us your phone and we respond. Just, we operate as Jack for the hour that we're on the show. Then yeah. there's a double narrative happening where we're operating Jack's Tinder and he doesn't know what's going on until we give him the phone back. And then he has to recap. I think it would be funny. <laughs> That's right. Like, yeah. For me, for me, I would I would think it's really funny to watch like a Tinder date meet in person. Yeah, like, yeah, like we're like, sitting here. Like I'm sitting here, and she door. just will walk me the door and sit down. Like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, like I'm yeah. Jack. Nice to meet you. That but then again, the like one thing I've thought about this, right? Like one thing. <laughs> once Graham brought it up, yeah. one thing that I, I'm worried about is when Graham and I do. Uh. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you always does this in the most pivotal parts. Yeah. All you stuff, if you open Tensions it, rising. Stop. Yeah. Oh, I was saying that. Yeah. I'm just worried. Like, I think that would be a really funny concept. Um, and maybe even like talk finance with the Tinder yeah, day, yeah, yeah. which is the most cringy thing to do. But I think it'd be really funny and just mm-hmm. weird for the viewers. But I'm so scared that, you know, like if we do go out of our normal kind of content here, maybe people will tune out because... A lot of people are like finance diehards. Like they really, really come for the finance and that's it. I Mm. remember in the beginning when we first started posting podcasts, a lot of people were saying like, oh, we just want to hear more about investing and stuff like that. Like that was, that was a pretty common critique of our podcast. And I'm scared if we do stray away from, from finance that maybe people won't, you know, they'll tune out. Like I know it's a good idea, but at the same time I have this doubt, you know? Yeah. Yeah. People really like finance. Yeah. They really, yeah. In this business that we're all Mm. in. There is a reality also that the audience is right. You're right, but the audience is also right. And you have to find a bit of a middle ground, but the audience typically wins if mm-hmm. it's a product, right? Yes, I agree. And, and if it's a business. Um, so if you have a channel, like if this channel for you is like, this is where I get to just be myself, I really enjoy this, then it's one thing. But uh, if you are trying to say, hey, we want to make, you know, we want to make this into a product that's uh, monetizable, then you do have to listen to the audience a bit and say, okay, let's root it in finance. Like those things that we talked about where start top of the show, you announce how much money there is, mm-hmm. you evaluate which stock you're going to invest it in or how your stocks okay. are doing that you did invest it what? in. This one's not Card full. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, you know what? Let's finish yeah, up we'll on this one. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I would say. Is like if you root it in finance, then you can build on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Ask the duck, duck question, duck horse question. We'll end oh, up yeah. There. We yeah. used to do this every podcast. Okay. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Mm-hmm. I would go a hundred... Uh, duck sized horses. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. hundred duck sized Everyone, yeah. so we got to find yeah. a new question. How, Everybody. How many could you take, though? I think I would just be able to go for a while, you know? Like, I, I would recognize that that's going to take a long time. Like a hundred thousand? Yeah. It's also a horse, which are pretty beefy. They're right, pretty muscular. Right. Yeah, but it's, it is muscular, but it's like, it it's, it's duck sized. It's a lot of yeah. horses. Maybe I'll go duck, because I feel like I could like just focus in on it, run away, get a little bit more strategic, because I only have one enemy. Mm. Yeah, but horses are massive. And, right, right. 
It's a big mm. duck. <laughs> Um, All right, guys. Well, that's that's it for the 13th ever episode Episode. of the Iced Coffee Hour. Thanks for joining us. Our guest is Jack. And what was your your name again? Graham. 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 And Graham, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, Tell them about the two free stocks that they could get down below in the description when they deposit $100 in Weeble because one of the stocks is worth $1,400. Up to. Check out the description to see uh, (laughs) what Graham just said. Yeah. (laughs) And they could join the mentorship group. You could join the mentorship group. Uh, You could do all kinds of things in the description. You should just hang out there for a bit, click some (laughs) links, see what happens. So with that said, you guys, smash the like button, subscribe, add us on Instagram, social platforms and everything. Oh yeah, just tell them to smash the like button. Smash the like button. Smash uh, the like button. Yes. For the YouTube algorithm. (laughs) Yes, for the YouTube. Algorithm. 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 Yeah. Cool. Thanks guys. See you. Till yeah. next time. Oh, we gotta work on a thumbnail really quick. Oh yeah, we just yeah. Gotta do like sure. a selfie or something. Would you mind um, clicking off? A... Just gonna scoot in here. Is this the first time we've had four people? This is. Yeah. Exciting. All right. I'll figure out how this works. There we go. Cool. Oh, what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Is you guys intro the iced coffee out? Sure. You guys oh, yeah, that? Please. Yeah. Sure. So wait, we yeah. should we, Graham, like we're out. Oh, we're out? Yeah. Okay.